problems I had with uh, answering the call of the Lord when the Lord called me to preach. I get what I'm trying to say here. It wasn't that I thought I'd have a problem opening my mouth for the Lord. Come on now. I've been a preacher's kid for many years. I didn't think I'd have a problem opening my mouth for the Lord. Well, what was your problem then? Keeping my mouth shut for the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. These times old flesh wants to lash back. Oh, yeah. There's times old flesh wants to rattle up. And uh, man, I'd like to have a quarter for the last uh, almost eight years that I've been driving a truck. Sometimes I've grabbed it. It wasn't pleasing the Lord. But I'd like to have a quarter for every time I've reached for that uh, CB mic to line somebody out. And the Lord tell me to keep my mouth shut. Amen. And I'm talking about even discussions of the Bible. Some folks, is purposed in their life, in their heart, that they're not going to see nothing but bad. Some folks, is purposed in their heart that they ain't going to find nothing but corruption. Come on, Rick. And boys, I'll tell you what, if we'll trust the Lord, Amen. He'll lead us. He really will. He really will. We're taking on, I'll tell you what, when we, we want to be like Jesus. Now I'm speaking for myself. I don't know the rest about you. We want to be like Jesus until we get to certain areas. I want to be like Jesus, Toby, so I'll have all kinds of faith. I want to be like Jesus when I need something, I'll have the faith and it'll be there. I want to be like Jesus when, when I want a miracle done, the power will be there. But when it comes to being like Jesus, keeping my beater shut. Wait a minute, preacher. No, you wait a minute. They called him a blasphemer. What do you got to say? He said, thou sayest. They called him a, 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 a devil. What do you got to say? Thou sayest. That was tough, wasn't it? That was tough. Amen. Do I always abide by that? No, I don't. I was thinking last night, I was reading something. And I was thinking last night that, uh, you know, folks, it used to blow my mind. How many remembers? Now, if you're over like me, you had to be over 20 years old to remember this. But how many, how many remembers WAY, Channel 4, out of Oak Hill, West Virginia? I talk about this a lot. On Saturday night, Shirley Love, uh, they, they had the wrestling up Oak Hill. Jean Madrid, Jan Madrid, Buddy, they was a friend of mine. I won't mention his name, but they was a friend of mine. <laughs> I mean, them boys, them Madrid boys, wasn't no more fighters than all of us. They just had muscles to pick people up and throw them down. They didn't know all the moves. But my buddy, he, he, he was so, you know, he, he was so intimidated by him. One night, about midnight, one o'clock on Saturday night, there used to be a place up at Gully Bridge. It's, it's gone now called Edgewater. A little diner and beer joint. And after the 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 wrestling, the Madrid brothers popped in there. Why the fuck Gene and Jan Madrid? They wasn't fighters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But my buddy, listen, anybody could see it was fake. Paul Zach, I was telling him the other day, I enjoyed him growing up. But I was tickled to death when he got off of that WWF stuff. <laughs> Is, and you know that's all right. Was you into that, Toby? <laughs> that's all right, Toby. That's that's fine. And you believing in that? But I'm talking about adults. <coughs> I had some family members that go up there and fight everything in Oak Hill, knowing it was fake. But yeah. <laughs> 
And folks can believe in something like that and cannot believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. You understand that? Yeah. Man, Lee, you couldn't survive if I'd pick you up and throw you 20 feet off out of the ring. Bust you right in the face, stomp you. There ain't no way you get up. Man, folks will sit there and say, my goodness. But we've got evidence right here that Jesus did. And we can't believe We can't believe it. Remember I told you a story real quick before I give an invitation. Let me tell you what I was reading this week that I started to tell you. In 1994, there was a couple of uh, teachers that was invited to go to Russia. Russia's opened up somewhat. But they went in 94 and they... Uh, before it was uh, the folks that got them over there, they, they went to police departments, they went to hospitals, and they went to schools and shared their testimony. But one of their stops on their tour on the visit to Russia, there was a, they sent them up to go to an orphanage. Man, this blessed me to no end. And they said when they went to this orphanage that that they went in there and, and they, they didn't have a whole lot of money, you know, to, but they wanted to do something, you know, on a child's level. So they, they the, these two teachers, they, they got them some cardboard and they cut, uh, they was to give each student uh, three pieces of cardboard. And they went in and, and uh, there was no colored paper available to them. They went to a store and got some yellow napkins, shredded it up, and they got some, uh, found some tan felt, if I can remember all this, and they, they, they ended up taking one of their uh, house coats, an older house coat, and they cut it up in small pieces. But they said they went into this orphanage and they began to tell these children uh, about Jesus. And they began to tell them, you know, how that Mo, uh, how that Joseph and Mary was uh, forced to uh, go to spend a night in the stable, and, and Mary would give birth to Jesus. And they was trying to make it real to them, and they was working so hard, and 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 and, and they was trying to get the point across. And then they handed out the three pieces of of uh, cardboard, the shredded up yellow napkins, and the little pieces of tan felt, and then the linen that they cut out of the house coat. And said there was about a hundred, so didn't have a whole lot of money, didn't have a whole lot of means, but they, they had enough stuff to where the kids, just like in our classroom, would make a craft. And said they, they told him, said, now, how did Jesus, said, where did they lay Jesus? And so they all took their three pieces of cardboard and they made a, a cradle like a manger. And said, what do you think that they put in that manger, that box that Jesus laid in after he was born? Well, they took the yellow shredded napkins and placed it in the box. And said, and then they took the felt and cut it out and made it look like a little baby, laid it on top of the yellow straw there. Then they took their little piece of linen that come out of the house coat and laid it upon the baby. And so everybody wanted to show theirs off and said they was looking at all the kids' crafts there. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we'll just tell the story the way that we know it, if we'll just share with people 
what we've experienced and what we've got. But I'll tell you what, somebody will believe it if we shine forth the light. They said there was this one little boy, they said probably about six. This is not a made up story. This is this is true thing that, that these teachers shared after they went to Russia in 94. Said there's a little boy by the name of Misha, about five, six years old. Said he brought his up there. They looked at it. He said, uh, said when they was telling that story about Jesus, there were the majority of them never heard about Jesus. He said they were sitting on the edge of their seat, all eyes and all ears. Misha brought his up there and they looked at it. Well, he hadn't made one baby. He made two and put in there. And they looked at it and they said, we got to hear about this. Said, uh, Misha, he said, Yes. Said, how come you got two babies in this manger? He said, well, I've never heard about Jesus till today. Y'all's told me he'd love me. He'd be a friend with me. He'd love me when nobody else would love me. He'd take care of me. He'd supply my needs. He said a while ago when y'all prayed and said he'd come and live with us. Yes. We can live with him if we believe. Yes. He said, I ain't got no mama and I ain't got no papa. Come on, Ricky. He yes. said, but I now got a friend. Yes. He said, that right there is Jesus. And that right there is Misha. Yes. He said, I did not have nothing to offer him. He said, but I told him that the best thing that I could do was keep him warm. And he said, that'd be good enough for him. I want to keep the baby warm, don't you? How do you keep the baby warm, Toby? Keep him close to you. Yes, sir. Amen forever. I want to stay close to him. If I can't do nothing else, I'll keep him warm. Heavenly Father, we come before you. And we believe you, Lord, and oh, how we'd like to believe you more. How we'd like to trust you more. And I thank you, Lord Father, for helping us, Lord. You've forgiven us, as Toby said, we'll stand in judgment. We'll remember our sins, but you won't. When you see the blood applied, my goodness gracious, that's what washed our sins away. That blood is what took, took the place of our sins. We thank you, Lord, for forgiving us. You forgive us, Lord. You don't bring them up no more. But, Lord, we'll say that we forgive. And, oh, Lord, we'll remind people all around of what somebody else done to us. Father, help us to be like you. Help us, Lord, to trust you. Help us to realize, Lord, when we take on your name, we take on your actions, Lord. And if we take on your name, Lord, we're supposed to perform like you, Lord. We're supposed to talk like you, walk like you, be like you. It's hard for us to do sometimes. We want to see the superhero side of you, Lord. We want to do the miracles. We want to do the signs and wonders. But all what's important to you is we have a heart like you, Lord. We have actions like you. Father, I pray that you would help us to be like that. And Lord, by chance you're speaking to somebody I know you have. Help them to see, Lord, that you don't expect a whole lot out of us. You don't ask too much, Lord. All you ask, Lord, is that we let you be in front, Lord, that you be our leader, that you speak for us, that you perform for us, that you make a way for us. And the problem we have, Lord, is allowing you to be in charge. 
So we ask you right now, Lord, that you would speak to hearts as only you can. Help folks to realize all they've got to do is submit to you, Lord. Surrender to you and trust you. Help us Christians to see, Lord, that we can always move up. Richard Harold could be a whole, whole lot more like you. I'm like many is in the church this morning. Your word teaches us that we've got to crucify the flesh, the flesh daily. Lord, help me, Lord, to keep this flesh under control. Help me never to, to forget that there's a constant warfare between the flesh and the spirit. Help me, Lord, to be more like you. God use us as only you can. We love you and we praise you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Stand if you would, church. He led the splendor.